Welcome back to Capital Markets. You can join our conversation on this program by, uh, on Twitter through at Channels TV or at CTV Tempeli. But for this segment, let us continue with the uh, market review for this week where we see the beers uh, pulling more weights on equities in the market. So the beers dominated the Nigerian equities markets this week as the key broad index closed 0.8%. 65% lower to end the week at 27,246.88. Market capitalization also declined to 9.35 trillion naira. Now, the banking index weighed heavily on the market on Thursday, despite Zenith Bank declaring an interim dividend of 25 kobo per share. However, total volume traded rose by 14.82% to 1.36 billion shares valued at 10.71 billion naira and traded in over 16,000 deals. Market breadth was negative with 18 gainers, topped by NPF Microfinance Bank against 36 losers led by CAP, that's Chemical and Allied Products. WAPIC Insurance, FBN Holdings and Guarantee Trust Bank collectively accounted for 48.99% of total volume traded during the week. Now, the NSE during that five-day trading session announced the revision of the listing and trading fees for securities listed and traded on its fixed income market. The revised fee structure takes effect on Monday, August the 17th, and will be piloted for an initial six-month period, followed by an evaluation. Now, an investment banker with Morgan Capital Securities, Lanre Ogmulano, joins us to throw more light on this revised um, rules in the markets. Thank you very much, Mr. Gulano, for joining us on Capital Markets this weekend. Thank you very much. Tim. I'm very sure it's your first time. I hope you put us through in uh, good light. All right. So let's look at the revised um, rules or revised fees for trading on bonds and listing bonds in the capital markets in the Nigerian stock exchange specifically. Um, basically, we understand that trading fees, which used to be 0.0001%, has now attracts, now attracts nothing, no charge for that. We also know that brokerage commission, that used to be 0.0005%, can now be negotiated with a cap of just 1%. Uh, talk to us about about this review. What, what do you make of it when you heard it as an investment banker, when you heard this new fees revised? What came to your mind? Um, I'm, I'm, I must say that uh, the fee revision is coming at the right time. And I must also note here that um, this can be seen as a result of competition, um, stiff competition um, from other markets where fixed income um, products have been traded. Um, it's good. It, um, it's a welcome development, and um, this will definitely um, have a tendency to boost the liquidity across the fixed income sector. Um, this will also encourage um, um, companies to come to the market to, um, to, to attractively list, um, list um, fixed income securities. Um, you realize that there have been issues in the past that uh, FDM bonds, FDM fixed income have actually crowded. Uh, the market. Yeah. So um, the various market, they are doing their best to ensure that uh, a different corporate bonds are actually um, encouraged, uh, given the incentive to actually come down to the market. So um, the eradication of uh, the, um, the trading fees will definitely reduce um, the cost of transaction. Yeah. And um, when you reduce the cost of transaction, then um, that is a very good incentive for, uh, for market players to come down and list. And that is for the people coming to list. The other part, uh, the, the other leg, is um, the reduction in brokerage fees. Yeah. Now, the brokerage fee used to be, as you rightly said, used to be 0 0.0005, 5 percent, um, which to a lot of brokers um, appears to be unattractive. Mm. But now, with a cap at 1 percent, yeah. it introduced some level of flexibility. So um, you see, the brokers will now have to do more mm. to play their own part to ensure that corporate bonds um, listed on the market, and the brokers can earn an um, attractive fee. And some brokers can even get z zero, can even get nothing, um, just to boost um, the market liquidity. And I think at the end of the day, um, the market will be better for it. 
Okay, so we know that the stock exchange has been in place for so long, and there are other platforms that just came into play, you know, a few years back. Why do we see more of these corporate bonds and FGM bonds being channeled or listed on these markets? Take, for example, NMRC came into the market, into the capital market space, and got listed on the FMDQ OCC. Why are we not seeing more listings at the NSE, the Nigerian Stock Exchange, which has been in place for long? Okay, um, you see, uh, uh, over the years, uh, the Nigerian Stock Exchange have been uh, more of equities, more equities. But the, uh, the, the, the fundamental difference between the Nigerian Stock Exchange and other markets like the um, FMDQ OTC, uh, the Stock Exchange is um, primarily for secondary market transaction. Um, but you realize that you know people um, market uh, tends to try and um, test new waters yeah. and test new markets. Yeah. But uh, basically, um, the Stock Exchange has to do their best. NSC has to do their best. Because now um, it's no longer it's, it's no longer uh, uh, the stock exchange. Now you have other market players, so they will also concentrate in the fixed income and ensure that they do their best putting policy in place to ensure that they're able to attract all those fixed income listings. So this 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 new uh, revision brings about it, it's it's just going to be in place for six months. Yeah. How much of effect or impact do you think this will have on the bonds market? Yeah, just uh, like directly said that they want to give you for the first six months. Um, but we must also look at the picture holistically. Um, there's a reason why uh, there is a reason why bonds, particularly corporate bonds, are not coming into the market. Mm. Until recently, um, Lafayette Africa, um, they've announced that they'll be, uh, they'll be listing um, 100, 100 billion bonds. We know that um, the, uh, the, the, there's a debt of ca cash flow yeah. in the market, so people need to come to the market to get bonds. Um, but um, there is still this suspicion and this perception that the market is not ripe enough. Um, the economy, as a of the yeah, state of the economy, the economy, um, the economy is not going as fast as, as it should. The perception is there, so people are still very, very skeptical. Okay, Lanrick, just hold on to your thoughts. When we come back um, after the break, we will be talking more about other things in the markets. Now, before we quickly uh, observe our break, let's give uh, our attention to the um, African exchanges, markets, and other climbs. The Egypt Stock Exchange closed the trading uh, day for this week on Thursday on a positive note. But this follows the announcement of a tentative financing agreement between the government and the International Monetary Funds, that's the IMF. Now, the IMF in Egypt discussed a support package for the country's economic reforms through a three-year extended fund facility program worth about $12 billion. And, of course, that leaves that particular market, the EGX30, at an index level of 8,377.71, having gained 1.04% yesterday, uh, on Thursday, I beg your pardon, and its week-to-date performance hangs now at 1.18%, with a very impressive 6.32% year-to-date um, performance. The BRVM, you can see on the screen, is 287.05%. That's weak to date performance is in the negative territory, just as the year to date has contracted to 5.55%. The Nairobi Stock Exchange is also 0.02% down um, yesterday, that was Friday, and its weak to date performance contracted to 0.94%, putting that in the negative territory of year to date 23.28%. Johannesburg Stock Exchange is also there. Glare on this. So clear on the screen, and its uh, week-to-date performance is 0.61%, with a year-to-date of 3.91%. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll continue the discussion.